Hi, I'm Heather. And I'm Amy. And we're the Experienced Impasse. Welcome to Ever So Clever Conversations with Amy and Heather. Here we are today. It's episode number nine. And we're talking about helping your partner be an empath advocate. So how can they support you in that? And Heather, and my mission is to really help people who are empaths, intuitives, highly sensitive people during this turbulent time, especially to thrive and bloom. That's our goal. Yeah. And we're actually together today in the same location. <laughs> not COVID friendly. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, don't pay attention to us today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So being an advocate, and I kind of, of course, me researching. <laughs> yeah. I looked it up and just I wanted the definition of the word, but I, I don't have it with me. But the one thing that struck stri struck me about the word advocate was being speaking out in public. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So I was like, well, that kind of makes sense. So when you're asking someone to be an advocate for you, I guess it would be them speaking up for you out in public. Um, but to me, it doesn't necessarily have to be in public. So I just thought that was an interesting part of the definition that kind of caught my eye. Is really interesting. I think of what we're talking about, or our, our, our thought processes, was that your partner becomes somebody who understands you so that mm -hmm. there's less misunderstanding, right? And, and that just supports you. But that's a really good point because I know I have somebody, and I asked my partner, would you help me with this situation? Because I knew I couldn't. And then there was resistance to that. So, I mean, that's a really interesting conundrum is, will you speak up for me where I, I couldn't. It was a position where I, I, if I did, I would have gone too far. <laughs> what? Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Not I. Not you. <laughs> but maybe out in public is more like saying, speaking out in open. Out in, I don't want to necessarily say public. So maybe speaking no. up. But it could be that you're at a restaurant and it's too loud, or there's perfume that's too strong, or something's going on, or there's people having a conversation that's making empath feel uncomfortable and the empath is like I don't want to sit here anymore let's leave and your partner or the person with you says to the waiter or to somebody can we get another place to sit yeah I mean it could be that yeah. that too that they're helping support yeah what is tricky for you yeah so that's part of it and that's not really what we're gonna I'll share today but I just thought that part was interesting when I looked that up so um but welcome so we didn't really <laughs> We don't write in. We jump right in. So <laughs> if you're here joining us live, say hello. We'd love to know who's here and what you think of maybe what advocate means to you. Um, and, you know, if you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, where we started this conversation was, you know, in a positive of helping that partner to be affirmed in the things that they're doing well for the empath or highly sensitive mm -hmm. or intuitive, where they're really understanding this, or maybe able to have a little empathy, but that they're, they're doing that well. Mm -hmm. And so that might be a good starting point to think about with your partner, just so that they are feeling like they're on track, and, and if you're identifying what they're doing right, they're more likely to be open to doing other things or listening. Yeah. Well, this morning I was thinking, remember that moment when you found out or figured out you are an impact? or a highly sensitive person. That was kind of probably an aha moment or you felt understood. Now we have to kind of explain that to our partner because maybe it's something you discovered recently and so it might be something new for them to understand as well. So if we want them to advocate for us, we might have to take time to explain to them what that, what that means. What is an empath? What is a highly sensitive person? We can't just expect them to all of a sudden maybe shift to and advocate for us until they understand what that really means and what we need from them. Right. I agree. I think also thinking through who they are and how they connect to the world is a nice way to make an analogy for them because I think it can get a little bit, uh, well, whiny or tricky if it's like, I just can't. I, you know, it kind of becomes like, well, can you do anything? Or, or there could become some resistance there. So thinking about an analogy to if they're a math person, if you have this, can you think about how 
beyond that. You know, I was just making a metaphor in my head this morning when I was getting up <laughs> about if your car was in the garage and four people you didn't know parked on your driveway. Now, let's say you had a two-car garage and only that wide of a driveway. You couldn't get out. And you wouldn't know how what help to get or how to find them. And so the next best thing you have to do is tow. You know, I mean, like, what do you do? So thinking along those lines is to try and illustrate something so that your partner can understand that it really relates to them and they can keep that in their mind can be helpful too. Right. So it is being open to what you need, but being able to explain it on a way that they understand too as well. Right? Absolutely. And yeah. I think that it sticks, you know, with that idea of a little metaphor they might mm -hmm. oh you know i'm thinking back to that time you mentioned that mm -hmm. and it's so relatable that they don't forget and i know in the past people have made that com made comments about you know this is a trait it's not a disorder it's not something that just happened to you right it's something that you were probably born with Right, I believe it's true. Or <laughs> yeah, high sensitivity you are born with it. Yeah, yeah. So then trying to explain that too. And I know when I finally understood and finally heard that term, it was like, okay, my whole like past, my childhood, a lot of things started to make sense to me. Um, and Amy and I went to see Dr. Elaine Aaron, and that's highly sensitive person, is what she talks about. She has some books out, so if that's even something you could provide to your significant other or parents or friends um, for them to read and understand, and maybe you have a dialogue from that too. Absolutely. I, I do think it's helpful, especially to, you know, if your partner doesn't want to read the whole book, or maybe yeah. they are a big reader, but to watch the movie together is sensitive. Oh, right. And then there is another movie, Sensitive in Love. I, I don't, well, we saw that one together, yeah. and I'm not sure. I was like, oh my gosh, that's earth shattering. <laughs> But I do think the sensitive is really a nice one for a, a snapshot of understanding of, oh, I see why you, whatever it is, are overly emotional or you can only take so much when you're out in public. I think that's yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So communication really is the key. I mean, it is to any relationship yeah, or a relationship, <laughs> right? But even more so, I think, um, as an impact. And sensitive person really trying to explain where you're coming from explain what you need um, and advocating for yourself so that that your spouse can advocate for you as well um, I agree about the trait too I think that what well, with high sensitivity it's actually highly sensitive people have a different nervous system so yes. there's depth of awareness is much more vast and it can be that's where part of the overwhelm comes and for most highly sensitive people they have to be away completely away by themselves to process all that information and that i know is really tricky if you're a quiet person too it might actually be easier because maybe that's expected i don't know but i think um if you're outgoing it, it can be confusing for a partner or friends to, to have you know to say i can't do that but that trait is the necessary piece. And, and Heather, when you said our empathic people, is it by genetics or so on? I feel it's who an empath is, that they are born that way. Mm -hmm. And it's cultivated over their life to understand things from a different perspective to some degree or a deeper perspective. And that is with you your whole life. I don't yeah. think that you can avoid it. You probably can learn how to manage it so well and work with it so well that it becomes you know, easier, right? Very easy. And some people might be it and not even know it because they've managed it so well and had a conducive childhood to really manage it. Well, and what I've learned over time of being married for 20 years is that I can't get frustrated with him too for not understanding me. So I think it goes both ways. You know, like, like you said, we are so highly aware. I know he's not highly aware. So I can be seeing things that are happening and I'll ask him, he'll be like, I have no clue what you're talking about. So then I can't get frustrated with him. I mean, there's times I want to and be like, he didn't notice that, but that's not who he is. So I think it in any relationship, again, it goes both directions. So I can't be frustrated or get angry because he is not highly sensitive and he does not experience things the same way I do, but I can bring awareness to him and be like, I, you know, I saw this amazing, whatever. 
flower and let's go look at that or bring him into my world. But he does not see those things the same as, as I do. Yeah, and I have a different experience, but similar where mine, I think, does notice those subtleties, but yet they resist it. They're like, well, who, who cares? I mean, they're not, they don't have a negative attitude, but they're, you know, well, so what? You know, I mean, it doesn't, it's neither here nor there. And I think um, that's curious to me because for me, I want to figure out and put that together, you know, so we're similar. I mean, we're both strategic thinkers, but I'm a creative and my husband is an analytical. So it's very yeah, different. Right. And I think if it doesn't go to the anal analytically, it's like drop it, you know? Yeah. So really that too, when we talk about advocacy or being an advocate, I think it's really important for you to be that for yourself as well. As then I think when you're doing that for yourself, then your spouse will follow along. You're kind of giving them permission or guidance on how to do that. Yeah. I agree. I'll take it one step further. You know, I, I just came to my mind, but when we have a, a son going back to school and doing a hybrid situation where he'll be in school on Tuesday and Friday, and I laughed. I'm like, okay, strategist, right? It doesn't make any sense. Have the kids there on Monday and Tuesday and then Thursday and Friday to separate the groups completely and keep the school healthy, right? But immediately my husband said, but logically it lets the teacher keep the kids on track at the same pace. So he, I mean, that's where he gave me a bigger picture thinking, which is necessary for the highly sensitive to really help them. Yeah. So there's also this piece of engage what they feel if you have somebody like that who actually does see the pattern, um, because it can help you understand, okay, I'm getting why it's going to help the school this way or, or whatever the situation is. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anything to add? I don't know if I do. It's not right there. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, we don't have questions. So if you do have a question later on, post it in here and we'll come back. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, so I guess one more thing here is, you know, you had mentioned this, that Heather, that your car beeps when you back up. Oh, yeah. So we have one of those cars. It's a Jeep. Nothing fancy. Just your Jeep. So we have a sensor. So our garage is enough for two cars. Like, barely, we have two Jeeps. So it's like if it's just two Jeeps in there. And if one of us is a little bit too close to the other, when I'm backing up the Jeep, then it beeps with the sensor. And it just, it must, because I'm my nervous system is so in tune, it just makes me want to freeze. I just like, ah, because if you don't listen to the beep, then it'll put on your brakes. So, and I don't like feeling like I'm not in control. So that beeping sound freaks me out so much. And I have had to have a conversation with my husband because times he's parked in the driveway and he's too close. So it's like, I need to tell him, please don't park your car so close to me because, and then explain the reason why, like the beeping. And he understands, he's not like, oh, you're, right. you're you know, that sounds ridiculous or anything. He totally understands. And he'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll remember next time. But something simple like that, it just, well, and it's so intense for me. Right. And if you didn't have a partner who did, because sometimes they don't mean not to listen, but sometimes they just do the habitual thing of driving into the garage. Yeah. But we have bobbers that hang from the fishing line down to the car, you know, so we know how far it goes. Yeah. And then we know how to center the car. Yeah, I mean, so there are ways like that too, where then so it's taking a, you could set that up so that right a proactive approach of like if they aren't able to listen, okay, let's try this. You know, keep thinking of strategies. Um, that's right. What makes it easier? Yeah, and even my daughter Ellie, who's in the car with me sometimes, we're both like ah, with its beep. You guys need some OSHA <laughs> she's, <in> your mouth. <laughs> she's so sensitive too, and then I don't want to go like too much further. Okay, and then that's something just ridiculous, but it's an example of me being able to because over time we've nurtured that relationship to where I can speak up and say hey can you and it's gentle not I'm not going in there storming and yelling and you know right it's right. just telling him what I need and he understands because he's lived with me so long that he gets what I need well I know you know, sorry Heather I'm like oh. <laughs> yeah you know I think in the greater part of the episode we'll talk more about how that's tricky because a lot of people are empathic highly sensitive and intuitive tend to be gentler types or their their fierceness comes a certain way and we'll talk a little bit about that in the deeper episode here so that you can get a deeper take on ways to work with that so that you can maximize that especially with strangers 
that's why I felt so really yeah, important that's, that's because you can't take the time to explain to them. Yeah. I'm highly sensitive and this is overwhelming to me having having to stand next to the jackhammer at the light or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's something good. Yeah. We'll talk more about that later. Right. Well, yeah. We We're continue a deeper conversation after that, after this, and it's for our Patreon members. So if you're interested in that, we'll put a link here. Um, it's re really cheaply priced. There's different tiers where you get different things from us. Um, I'll even flex my biceps, just kidding. <laughs> um, it's a way to support us so that we can provide more um, well, content, content yeah. into the yeah. world. It's We're a, both writers. Yeah, it's a win-win. We're looking <laughs> yeah. for all the altruistic sharing the information that we have so far and then do research as well as writing to bring more of that content forward and help get the support for us to do that, to bring it to you and to bring it to other people as well. That's it. So I'll put a link later in here um, for anyone interested. And then next time, we will be doing boundaries for the impact. Ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> you need your boundaries. <laughs> you need them. <laughs> you need them. <laughs> I've got to be sense. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, you guys. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah.